Okay. Uh, there's something in that interview to irritate all sides. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, or there's something in that interview to take away and say, ha, hamara side jeeta, depending on your point of view. Shashi, I'll start with you. Prashant Kishore makes two arguments. He believes the opposition messed up. If you look at the Fuller interview, he talks about how the India Alliance started just too late. The Congress thought it was going to do well in the assembly elections. So they got their act together much too late. They have not been able to channel anti-incumbency rural distress into, into a fundamental shift. But he believes that the personal brand of the prime minister has taken a hit and does not stand where the prime minister himself would have wanted it to. How do you react to these seemingly paradoxical comments? <clears throat> Shashi Shekhar. I think uh, Prashant Kishore is kind of uh, a victim of his own hypothesis where he said that, you know, the election is so long, everyone has to come up with theories. We need to give opinions. I think his comments on brand. We are, you know, symptomatic of the same measure to say whether the brand is on the ascendant or on the decline. I don't see any such uh, objective measure. You look at his social media numbers, they're on, you know, as strong as ever before. Uh, as far as TRPs are concerned, we know that the whole TRP system itself is questionable. So I don't, I won't go get into that. Uh, the the nature of social media has changed. I think that is something we need to recognize. Earlier, uh, social media engagement in the campaign was largely through you know interactive mediums like uh, Twitter and Facebook, which were measurable. You had an objective measure. Today, the election is largely on private person-to-person -person social media. It's on WhatsApp groups. It's on uh, you know all kinds of person-to-person uh, -person messaging where you don't have an objective measure. So there is really no basis for you to say whether you know the brand is up or brand is going down. Uh, as far as uh, the uh, his own uh, engagement is concerned, uh, be it his rallies, be it his interviews, he has not let up even one bit. He's, he's maintained that momentum. And I think that speaks for itself as well. Uh, and lastly, I would uh, you know make this point that the uh, this uh, this whole notion that somehow you know the, the brand has lost its appeal. Uh, we seem to forget that uh, you know between 2019 and 2024, we've had a massive, big event, a once in a hundred year pandemic. And he has come through that unscathed to put the country back on track. Uh, so I think that in itself uh, speaks to a lot in terms of how he has been able to sustain his persona, where today the discourse has completely ignored what has happened with COVID. We straight away go from 2014, 2019 to 2024. We forget what happened between 2020 and 2022. And then that speaks to how his public persona has been able to, you know, uh, dominate the narrative. Okay, let's bring in uh, Manisha Priyam. Uh, Manisha, uh, you know, the other argument, which I think we can all agree with, is that the India Alliance lost critical time. And even if you see new energy in the opposition, the Congress spent a lot of time uh, thinking it was going to do better in the assembly elections. And Prashant Kishore makes the argument that between October and February, almost nothing happened on the opposition front. Now it's too late. You argued in the beginning of this program that there's a tectonic shift that you feel. It's a phrase that Sabha said is possible for Uttar Pradesh. Sunita is still saying no. Hold on. Shifts hai, but BJP has the edge. So once again, uh, you know, let me begin with what Prashant Kishore has said. Look at the statement he's making, two parts. He He's looking at the data narrative and he says whether it's seven stages, whether you analyze it six months before, you meaning he, he is going to be just the same. Now, in terms of any fundamentals of data analytics, the one thing that one cannot say about data is smooth it with any certainty. And I hope through your channel, please request him to read Nicholas Nassim Talamji and you will understand that the fundamental nature of data is uncertainty. And elections are a process by which you take the uncertainty of lives and India, which is a country of the poor, the uncertainty and precarity of lives, it's covered over by election results. And we try and make a short-term certainty out of it and give hopes to people and agendas to governments. Now, who is a very respected Mr. Prashant Kishore to tell me that I should not be discussing about any fundamental change or turbulence 
from then to now when in fact in the grassroots in my field work i do find the difference and let me therefore take you to one of the sites a very key battle i know there are tickers running on your show saying up is very important maharashtra and bihar not as much but i'm tracking an important constituency called ujjarpur and why is it very important because you know it's not as if the bjp did not put in long term strategies into fighting this bihar battle they picked up a kushwaha leader samrat chaudhry whose father was an erstwhile rjd person as the leader this was going to be a definite rural and obc face for the bjp but by the time the elections come the maximum number of tickets to the kushwahas are actually given by the rjd and you have ujjarpur where the kushwaha leader upender kushwaha is fighting a battle with another kushwaha leader who comes from the cpim now what's the summary of this small story in the big picture the summary is that both upender kushwaha of the nda and rajaram kushwaha of the cpim are talking about issues of farmers and agriculture i do not hear any resonance of the ram mandir i do not hear at all anything about the g20 and therefore i am there to conclude that precarity of rural lives matter and therefore i conclude that people have taken the opportunity of this general election to ground it to their issues and do not think that rural rural i heard another theory that came about was women voters have to be watched out for and they are getting the rations as if you give them a delivery of a ration ki bori and women are the captive gaiya who will ration mila ghas khai or vote de diya this is not correct and indeed i have been writing on women voters the indian express opted etc turning it out for nitish kumar etc there are issues being developed by them the point is take the opportunity of the elections whether it is an esteemed and a very prestigious uh, you know st- poll strategist like prashant kishor to listen to the voices and tell us what the voices are saying rather than tell me that there's certainty in data i make the last point about the brand modi i think i differ with him there i find that even as people are discussing in the modi rallies as many people turn up and definitely do not criticize him though as soon as mr modi is exited the whole discourse becomes very very different so i do not think that there is such an irrelevance of brand modi everybody gathers together it may be faction ridden but i find very little criticism of mr modi so i do differ from him on both respects and that's the nature of data that's the nature of political life that's very interesting but to be fair to prashant kishore in the longer interview he speaks repeatedly about the kind of issues you're speaking about but his argument is the opposition has not been a people are he argues that the people are the opposition the opposition is not the opposition so i should give him that uh, that context mohan it's very interesting that basically maybe we can all agree that people are making this election about issues <coughs> of livelihood of economy of education of opportunities for their children and that is how it should be and irrespective of who wins that is a healthy turn absolutely but we can all all See, agree on barka absolutely agree with you what prime minister modi has done is to raise the aspiration of the ordinary indian today almost all indians have got the basic necessities of life food water shelter power toilets gas everything else they got they getting good infrastructure in places near to them large number of jobs are being created even though the majority of do not pay well people want more people want a better life and they are very eager for a better life aspirations are higher did you see the same level of aspirations in 2014 you did not so many people have resigned to their fate upa2 was such a disaster with so much of corruption people are angry and upset right you didn't asp- i never seen such high aspirations in india and you must give credit to him that aspirations are higher when aspirations have gone up higher because the basic necessities of the most of the people have been met then obviously they'll be extremely critical they'll demand more and that is a healthy sign that is the deepening of democracy where every citizen is saying this is what i want and this you must provide for it right and we are demanding from modi or who are rules this country that look we want all these things forget about that we want to see a big difference in the quality of our lives we want better education for children we want better jobs we want more safety we want more security we want more income that's what they demanding and that's very good and if they're being critical about that i think there's a fantastic thing that we are seeing 
And what do you say on the brand Modi argument? I know you said we should hold our judgment on that. But do you, you see, find you see, Shanti? See. Yeah. <laughs> Barka, brands always go up and down. Okay, brands are not a constant thing. You know that brand. I mean, you are such a fantastic brand at one point of time. You are the great heroine, right? Then you saw it downturn. Now you have come back. You know, everybody on this show, Saba, you know, everybody respects her. She's a great brand. Sometimes you're very critical of her. We're very critical of Manisha. We're critical of everybody. So brands go up and down depending on the circumstances. Today, there's so much of clamor, so many things happening, so many negativism, so many things. So we can always say the brand is coming down. This is happening. One small event here, blown up into something, yeah, sure. all kind of stuff, right? So I think what we should say is, I think to me, the conclusion is the aspirations of the ordinary Indians have come up. It's a great sign. India is progressing well. We are demanding greater performance from the government. We're impatient of governments who are come to power. We're demanding more. We don't want to go back to the old days of patronage and family mm. and all that. And we want a better life for all of us. And that's why we're becoming more critical and more open. And I think you make a good point about brands not remaining constant. No brand can remain fully constant all the time. Uh, and, and that's a point well taken. Now, before I come to uh, to Sunita and then Sabha, I'll give you the last word. Uh, Akhilesh Yadav and Rahul Gandhi. Sunita spoke very perceptively about the kind of social engineering in their ticket distribution, a shift in UP, but said the BJP still has the edge because the margin, the gap is so high. Now, uh, the pictures have gone viral of, of stampedes at some of their rallies. At one rally, the mic failed. And Rahul Gandhi did a conversation with Akhilesh Yadav. I'll play out a 30-second clip of that and then I'll come to soon. But I think that now a new partnership has become a new partnership. Because this time our cooperation is probably not the first time such a cooperation. It means that everything is all connected. The best thing is that as much as they said, two girls are connected. So much yoga आपसे हमसे इंडिया के बारे से और जुड़ गया तो ये नेचुरल अलाइंस है so that's just a little snippet. Sunita, go ahead with your thoughts because you ended your last comment by saying there are shifts, but the edges with the BJP. Hi, uh, I lost uh, uh, a little bit. Now I find uh, Prashant Kishore contradictory. If Modi is is not a brand or his brand value has gone down, then BJP is in for trouble. Uh, it's Modi who's going to get seats. Uh, the, uh, in fact, in BJ, in uh, UP, they change certain candidates thinking that Modi, because of Modi, they'll win. For instance, I can talk about Bareilly, I can talk about Pilipit from where Varun Gandhi was removed. Seasoned politicians were removed, Merat. Where the three time, uh, the two time uh, MP was removed and Arun Gobil was sent. So I think Brand Modi, whatever it is, he is a savior for BJP. If he's not there, then BJP cannot uh, win the elections. And this brand has been created. All the holdings have Modi ji. Nowadays, sometimes we do see Yogi's uh, photograph. Regarding these two young boys, uh, as it is, Do Larke UPK, which is I find it very funny because uh, ridiculous because they're politicians. Whatever they are, whatever they are doing, good or bad, but they're trying to give up a fight. They're trying to put up a fight. And I think opposition must do that. Why should we criticize two people just because they have come together, they have better understanding, there is a better coordination between their workers, they're able to pull the voters towards them, crowds towards them, and we criticize because they are there, because they are the only ones who are fighting Modi. Otherwise, it's the field is open for BJP, all seats they can take. So I think um, there is criticism of Rahul and uh, Akhilesh because their alliance failed earlier. Uh, so maybe this time also people think that, but the crowds that we see, that tells a different story. Let's not forget 2004. <coughs> Who was there against Atal Ji? Sonia, who couldn't even speak. Rahul is speaking better. Akhilesh is speaking better. So, uh, you know, sometimes uh, some surprises do happen in politics. But as of now, you don't see that happening. I was just going to say to you, Sabha, and then I did remember one other thing I wanted to speak about, which was J.P. Nadda's very interesting comment, the BJP president's yeah. comments on the RSS and the BJP. Yeah. And he actually seemed to suggest that the BJP could now exist autonomously of the RSS, something we haven't spoken about 
because a lot in this election will depend on getting the vote out. There have been reports of a dispirited, uh, you know, RSS worker in pockets. But I think we must also acknowledge that if there is no wave, if there is no surge, if there's no visible one issue, there is no palpable anger except in pockets. In Pok, when you go to a Samajwadi Party rally, sure, I met young men desperate about for jobs, uh, very uh, anguished about, you know, leaked exams, recruitment into the military. But overall, through my travels, I have not sensed that. And I think as someone said, Akrosh nahi hai, ankush hai. Maybe people are not angry, but they feel the need for some risk to restrain, you know, to restrain overarching power. That doesn't mean a tectonic shift though. Sabha, go ahead. So there are a couple of things and, you know, it's do, it's counter. One might contradict the other, but this is what I think. Because obviously the BJP starts off, Sunita made a very good point, with a far get, greater grip over the technical aspects of election. In Uttar Pradesh, when I traveled, I Uttar Pradesh, they have divided into six zones, the only state they have done so with. It's a very interesting strategy because it was a state that they conquered actually only after Modi came in. So they have an office in Mirad, they have Braj, they have different headquarters where the Sangatan work. They map every constituency, electoral roles. And I have repeatedly said that the opposition is very, very weak with that aspect of the election. They depend on creating a wave. But what I also know, because I've actually have some of these pictures, Sunita so said, Rajputs were angry, but I can tell you that in one particular seat, I took the village, it's called Reva. It was an entirely a Thakur village. And it was a funny, Fatehpur Sikri was won by the BJP with over 4.5 lakh votes. And I found an odd sequence of events unfolding over there. There was a Jat candidate and the Thakurs, the whole village was voting for the Congress uh, over there. And then I go and I've taken a picture of this guy. There's a board outside his house, ex-BJP MLA. Anyway, I, I, I he, him, he was saying, Sangathan ne hume bulaya hi nahi hai, char lo. Hamare ghar mein char, Aligarh se lekar Fatehpur tak, Sangandat ka abhi tak uh, aya nahi hai. So there is a weird thing in Merat. Aapne Merat ka zikr kiya. Merat bhi mein gai. Merat mein bhi, Arun Govil, the candidate himself said ki Sangathan ne mere liye kaam nahi kiya. To BJP ko technically kai jaga BJP hi shaft kar rahi hai. My latest is, this is simply through connections. Amiti ka ek block hai. Because Smithy reportedly, through other sources, has been very arrogant with some of the local workers. Ek block mein nahi kar rahe uske liye ka. To ye jo, we talk about cadres, we talk about Sangatan, they are human beings. They may also have a view ki hume kuch mil raha hai, ye karap okay. loko ko aapke rahe. That is also a little bit of it is happening in specific seats. I'm not saying there is an overall rebellion. It is not so. And I believe, I would imagine that this is magnified multiple times in a state like Maharashtra, where you have wrecked parties and you have brought in people against whom the same Karikata so, yeah, was to run campaigns. Yeah. 